hi everybody welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another review of 90 day fiance the other way and first up is jenny and submit so i have been kind of bored with the jenny and submit storyline i like jenny i like submit but their storyline is getting kind of it was getting kind of stale for me because it wasn't progressing you know we're still stuck where we where we where we've been stuck for the past two seasons i don't know three seasons i don't know how long it's been you know with submit fighting with his family about wanting to be with jenny and the family not allowing it and so it's just kind of been at that standstill jenny goes back and forth between america and um india and every time she comes back to india we're still in the same situation of submit trying to i don't know figure out a way to convince his family to accept jenny which i don't see how that's gonna happen now let me make a little side note maybe it will happen because this is i'm kind of going way off topic on uh, 90 day fiance happily ever after it seemed like with michael and angela that the mother was just not going to give her blessings at all because the way that the show was presenting it to us they were presenting it as if michael's mother was just not going to be in agreement with him marrying an older woman and marrying a woman who would not be able to give him children and so when they went to the mother to let her know that there was no way for her to have kids but they still wanted to get married all of a sudden the mom is just like yeah sure that's fine that's okay we accept her and it's kind of like okay everybody michael himself his mother they were all set on Michael has to have children. Michael wants to have children. This is something that he himself personally wants. The mother wanted him to have kids. It was very important. I mean, they went on and on how in their culture, it is so important for them to procreate and have children and have a family. It was like the number one thing of getting married. And now when they realize that he will not have, he will not be able to have children, everyone is just kind of like, oh, okay, it was, they can get married, it's fine. So it was like kind of confusing, like, okay whatever so it might happen here with submit you know where for two seasons i don't know how long it's been um ever since they came on the scene it's always been the parents of submit are just like we're not gonna accept her she's too old we want grandkids she's too old you gotta have children she's too old we're not gonna accept her da, da, da. and maybe now it's gonna be like oh yeah sure you want to get married fine so like so why do we go through this whole merry-go-round of are they going to accept her? Are they not? What is he going to do? What are they going to do? It's just like, I don't know, whatever. So it starts off with uh, Jenny telling us that, not telling us, but I guess telling us, saying that, you know, she has a 10 year, she has her visa is good in India for 10 whole years, but she has to keep going back every six months to America, I guess, to get it renewed. Now, if her and Submit are able to get married, she won't have to go back and forth anymore every six months. She'll be able to stay in India permanently. And so it wasn't really much about Submit and Jenny. Okay, so we, we, we get through that and then we get through the whole thing of Submit, you know, having a conversation with Jenny about trying to convince his parents to accept her. He talks about how he was, you know, forced into this arranged marriage and he wasn't happy and now that he's happy with jenny you know how come his parents don't want him to be happy and you know he's basically like i'm gonna try to convince them to accept jenny like i said you know here we go again now what kind of revived the whole submit and jenny storyline was that we get to meet submit's parents for the very first time they are taking center stage and it was exciting because their storyline is so boring that I was so excited to finally get to meet his parents. Oh, yeah. So Jenny did tell us the story of how her and Samit have first met, you know, that they met on Facebook and then she came to India to see him and that um, she said that when she came to India to see him, she was staying with his family and she was staying on the third floor or something. And every night, Samit will creep up there for them to, you know, take care of their business. And they kind of were acting like that. Oh, it was our little secret. And nobody knew. Trust me, the whole house probably knew you were not keeping it, you know, that much of a secret. 
So when you think people don't know, they know. So we meet his parents. I didn't take down their names. And they give their version of how they first met Jenny. And they said that they met Jenny back in 2013. That Samit had met, you know, this woman online on Facebook. And then she traveled to India to see him and was staying with him. And so they were under the impression that Samit and Jenny were just good friends. Well, the father came to find out that after everybody would go to bed at night, Jenny and Samit would stay up talking all night long. And I don't think he felt comfortable saying it, but I think the father knew that his son was sneaking into Jenny's room because he says that all of a sudden he realized that they were having a relationship, that it was more than just friendship. Now, how would he have known that unless he got an inkling of what was going on on the third floor? So... The father and the mother are saying that they're just not going to, they're, they're not, the mother especially, she's just not happy about it. She says that, you know, Jenny is too old and that um, she should have treated her son like her own son and not like, you know, some boy to her that she was having a fling with. And the father said that, his father said that he had these hopes and dreams of his son having children of his own. He envisioned himself playing with his grandkids. And he does have other children because we know that Samit has at least one other sibling, which is the brother. Um, so he could still have grandkids. You don't necessarily have to grand have to have grandkids from every single one of your children. But anyways, so the father's like, you know, I'm not going to be able to play with my grandchildren because this woman is just way too old for my son. So it ends with, uh, Samit coming over to his parents' house, I guess, to try to convince them that, you know, to accept Jenny and to give their blessings for their marriage. So we'll see what happens with that on October the 11th because there's no more 90 Day Fiance the other way until October the 11th. So we'll see what happens. Next, next we move on to Jahoon and Devin. So Alicia's leaving to come back to the United States and of course you know Devin is sad and devastated and whatever that's really emotional scene of them saying goodbye to each other now there was a scene where um inside their apartment Alicia was sitting um inside at the kitchen table and um Devin no Jahoon was holding his son on the couch and Jahoon was trying to like reach out to Devin you know you know you you're gonna have you know he was trying to be polite and he was saying to Devin not Devin he was saying to Alicia the mother-in-law that he was gonna miss her once she's gone and Alicia all she did was just kind of like stare at him she didn't say anything and I was like that is so rude you know he's trying to be nice and you can't even say anything at all you know you can't even say I'll miss you guys too you know or you know how sweet of you that you'll something but she just stared at him so um alicia tells her daughter devin that she basically feels like nothing but bad is going to happen after she leaves she says watching their relationship is like watching a train approaching a broken bridge and you know the bridge is broken up ahead and you can't do anything about it that's what it's like and I'm just like, wow, she has zero hope, zero faith in Jahoon and Devin because they think that Devin, I mean, Jahoon is just too immature to be a husband and a father. But once again, this is the man that Devin chose to be the father of her children because you lay down with someone, regardless of how much protection you're using, there's always that possibility. So this is the choice that Devin made. So then um alicia leaves and jahoon is really happy that she's gone he says he can finally live again because she's a very uh, strong force you know i i felt i even felt relieved that she was finally gone because you know she just has this presence about her that you know that everybody is walking around on eggshells around her except for her own daughter devon um so i'm glad she's gone she really wasn't adding anything to the sh to this to the show or anything other than stress and anxiety. And then there's a scene in there where Jahoon, I think, said that he had to go to see his mom, and Devin asked him for what, and he said to return her credit card because he was using his mother's credit card for gas. And Devin was like, "You need to stop." you know, borrowing money from your parents. I don't know what's going on here, y'all. 
um she says you need to stop borrowing money from your parents and you know you need to take care of your own responsibilities so we'll see how that goes next we go to Biniam and Ariella so they're still having some serious issues Ariella is having some serious doubts about her life in Ethiopia which to me is so silly because when she was still living in America and had plans to move to Ethiopia, her family was not for it. They were against her coming to Ethiopia. And they said, just at least stay here until the baby's born. And she wasn't having it at all. She was like, no, I need to be in Ethiopia so that Benyam can experience the childbirth with me. And it's important for me that the father is there when the baby's born. Now she's in Ethiopia getting exactly what she wanted, going against everybody's wishes, going against probably her own best judgment and now she's talking about how you know she still has time to go back to America before it gets to that point where it's no longer safe for her to fly and so she's you know creating these arguments with Biniam about you know about where they're living and um, not being able to provide for the baby and whatnot and that she's thinking about going back and she's trying to she says to him you know what if I decide to go back and he was like, why would you do that? And then she says, because I really have no reason to stay here. I came here for you, but if it's not working out, you know, what reasons do I have to stay here? And he tells her, well, the reasons that you have to stay here is for me and the baby and our family. That's why we're here. And then he tries to tell her to be patient. You need to give life here in Ethiopia a chance and you're not doing that. And she's just like, still saying you know I still have this opportunity to go back safely you know um, and she's seriously considering it now they go apartment hunting <sighs> we all know that they're temporarily staying in one place right now and that he's having another home uh, reconstructed and that home is like a total disaster zone it is completely demolished from top to bottom and he says it's going to take about a week or so or a month or whatever for it to get fixed and i just don't see it but anyways so they go apartment hunting because the temporary place that they're staying at has you know no indoor plumbing and whatnot it's got a lot of i think that's the place that they're staying at it's got a lot of issues i think and so um they find an apartment and it's of course it's beautiful it's gorgeous you know it's beautiful even for like american standards it's pretty high end and the rent there at that apartment comes out to uh fourteen hundred dollars a month Biniam only makes five hundred dollars a month and ariella we all know doesn't work isn't working there so he basically tells her look i can't afford it um, but don't worry because I told you that I'm uh, working on my the apartment that my cousin has given us, the one that's completely under construction. And he says, you know, we can live there. And she says, but there's not enough time. And he says, all I need is a week to fix it. And she's like, there's just no way it's, it's going to take a week. So they're in the taxi and they're arguing back and forth about this. And she is making some valid points. There's no way that place is going to get be ready in a week. I don't see that place being ready in a month. And she is also trying to start an argument i guess so that they can like be completely at wit's end with each other and she has an excuse to hop on a plane and go back to america that's what i think because when he told her to shut up because they were arguing back and forth and she was you know screaming at him and he was like just listen shut up i thought that she was going to go crazy on him. Like, who are you telling to shut up? I would have done that. But she took it all in stride because I think she realized it was working. He was getting really irritated. And maybe she thought that he can get irritated to the point where if she decided to go back, he'd be relieved. Like, okay, yeah, you need to go because this is not working out. I'm thinking that's what she's trying to do. This girl is so confused. So she says that she's not going to stay and she's still keeping in mind, you know, how much time she has until she's able to no longer fly. Now, we all know from the previews that she does stay there long enough to have the baby and a little bit after that. Armando and Kenneth, the girls are leaving. Kenneth's daughters are leaving and um, his daughters are so sweet. His children are just the sweetest most polite most caring most compassionate people have ever seen on television they're just the best that they're just so they love their dad so much and the love that they have for the father completely shows and the love that they have for armando shows they're just the best kids ever and so 
uh, they're getting ready to leave, and they're they're sad about their dad leaving. And of course, you know, Kenneth breaks down to see his daughters leave, and the next step is to meet Armando's family. So we won't know what happens with that until, like I said before, October the 11th. But, you know, that's coming up. And I'm really, really nervous about that. I'm like, you know, on edge about how that's going to go. So, Yazan and Brittany. So, Brittany got um, news, sudden news, that her divorce hearing is coming up in three days. So, she needs to get, you know, out of Dodge, go back to America, and deal with that, which is good. I'm glad that it's finally happening because I kind of thought that it was going to take forever because I think her husband was deported. So, I'm thinking those are probably easy grounds to get a divorce, I think, if your spouse is deported. So, anyways, so she's trying to hurry up and get back to the United States. She's saying goodbye to Yazan, and she lies, of course. That's what she does best. She lies to Yasin about why she has to go. She says that her sister's having a baby and um, she needs to go back for that and I guess take care of some other business. She doesn't say anything about the divorce. Now, Yasin, he's intuit intuitive enough to know that there's something else going on, but he doesn't know what. Because in his confessional, he says that he kind of feels uneasy about her leaving and he feels like this is like the end of their relationship. And, um, but, you know, but we'll find out. Um, and then the funny thing to me is when Brittany keeps on saying, you know, um, I can't let them know that I'm still married. I can't let them know, if, you know, because once they if they ever find out that I'm still married, it's going to be terrible for me. But they are going to find out because you're on a show. That's what I don't understand. Do you not know that they're going to find out? Why are you talking as if there is a scintilla of a chance of them never finding out that you're still married? That you can go, you're going to hide your marriage, hide your divorce and resume life with Yasin like you were never a married woman to begin with. How are you, why are you playing like that? Like you, you're on a show, they're gonna see everything. So I don't understand how people do that on these reality TV shows. They talk about these secrets that they have and they know that everybody's gonna eventually find out about it. So why do you act like there's a chance of them never knowing? So she's going to go. So she's on her way back to America to deal with her divorce. Thank God. I'm so happy that that's finally happening. Melissa, Melissa, Melissa and Tim. So Tim and Melissa, they meet for whatever, for dessert or something. And he tells her that the job situation is not going to be, um, it's not going to go as easily as he thought it was. So he tells her that he won't be able to work unless he gets a, you know, some type of, um, permit to stay here to work and the fastest and easiest way for that to happen would be to get married and Melissa says to him well that's not going to happen because she's like I'm not going to marry someone that I don't even trust and he basically tells her that well if it doesn't work out then I'm gonna because I'm right now I'm just surviving on my savings and so if I can't get a job and the process of, of getting per permission to work here legally is going to take forever, then I might as well go back to America. He says, and I'm glad that I kept my job because I still have a job waiting for me in the United States. And she didn't know this. So she's upset because he didn't tell her. And so, you know, it's all coming back to her like, OK, here we go again. Him keeping information from me, lying to me, hiding things from me. And she doesn't like it at all. And she also doesn't like the fact that he kept a job in America because I guess she was under the impression that he completely gave up everything in the United States to start new in Colombia. And so when she finds out that that's not the case, that he still has one foot in America, she's kind of like, I guess she kind of, this is how I took it. I could be wrong. This is how I took it. It's kind of like, well... I must not be that much I must not be worth it to him if he wasn't willing to give up everything for me so kind of like hmm I'm not that important to him this relationship is not that you know he really didn't to her he didn't sacrifice enough for her and she's like and he was like well what do you what do you expect I had to keep my job there in case things here didn't work out and so she was kind of like taken aback by the fact that he thought there was a possibility that it wouldn't work out I guess she feels like I don't know what's going on with this girl because you're not gonna let go that he cheated on you you're giving him a hard time about him cheating on you he's willing to come to Colombia to start new with you but not get married to you because I don't want to get married so 
you thought that he was going to come to Colombia not knowing how the relationship would go because you're not over it, whatever he did in the past. And he's just supposed to somehow, once you kick him to the curb, he's just supposed to stay in Colombia and like beg for you to come back to him forever. I don't understand what she was thinking. <laughs> I don't know what she was thinking so she got she got upset about that and he was like are you serious you know of course i'm gonna keep you know my job in america because i don't know where we're going and then she said something about well you don't understand the sacrifices that i made for you because i went against my whole family and i took you back and he was kind of like you know um well you know like unbelievable he was just like like she's not understanding where how where he's coming from like she he doesn't understand why she's upset that he kept a job and she's upset and she doesn't understand why he doesn't understand that you know i've given up as much as you have probably more than you uh to be with you so i don't know what's going on with these people i'm very confused but anyway so they're sitting there and you know it's very tense and he's looking at her and then she says to him stop looking at me you're annoying and then he gets upset and then he leaves so what's the issue here y'all are in agreement that y'all don't want to get married um why are you upset that he kept a job i mean that was like the smartest thing that he's that anyone has ever done that you know you would keep that he would keep his job in america in case things didn't work out here i guess she really wanted him to just give up everything and just struggle you know in Colombia and she could and she could hold that I guess she felt like she was always going to hold that cheating over his head to control him and that he was going to be under her complete control because he had nothing to go back to in America maybe that's what she was banking on and then to, to see that you know he's got a plan b and the plan b does not involve her at all you know I guess kind of rubbed her the wrong way and it made her upset. I don't know. I'm very confused. I'm very, I don't even know why he came. I guess he came. I don't even know why he came back. I have no idea what's going on here. Okay. That's another thing. Do you not know how? Okay. So, so this man leaves America to come to Colombia to prove to her that I'm sorry about what I did and I'm willing to move to your country, change my whole life for you, to prove to you how sorry I am about what I did, about cheating on you. Okay, got it. So didn't you know that if you were coming to Colombia, you would have to get a job because Meliza does not look like someone who would take care of you. So you knew you had to get a job. Did you research this before coming here? How do I get a job in Colombia when I don't have my proper papers to live there or I'm only there on a temporary visa? What needs to go on for me to be able to get a job, maintain employment, and so I can take care of myself? You didn't think about that? I don't understand. Okay, I'm tired of talking about it because I'm going around and around. So that's it, you know. Um, cute little episode of 90 day fiance the other way huh. thank you for joining me and hopefully you will come back sometime after october 11th for the next episode bye